Hey, what's up folks? It's Smith in the building once again. We are looking at uh, construction plans and today we are going to be looking at the selective demolition plan. Also, you can just call it the demolition plan, uh, but we're going to get right into this because we may not need to spend a whole lot of time uh, here. Now, hopefully, if you watched the last video in this series uh, where we were looking at the phasing plan, Actually, that wasn't the last video, but a couple of videos ago, we were talking about the phasing plan and uh, the phasing plan actually showed that there was going to be some demolition occurring on the site. And so it kind of broke it down into phases as to what is going to get demoed first and so forth and all that sort of stuff. So we we figured out uh, and here it is right here on the demolition key plan. Uh, it outlines what the phases are. So like we kind of a review here you know, is you got that existing modular building that's going to be part of uh, what's removed in phase one. And then this portion of the building is going to be removed as well. And then uh, phase two was actually, uh, I can't remember, maybe this was all phase one. Yeah, maybe building the school was all part of phase one and, and phase two was demoing the existing school to remain. Okay, so let's look at this entire building now that we've kind of seen from the demolition key plan what the overview is. Let's now look at um, what we're actually going to be doing. So this is the this is this was the existing building, the existing school um, that that is set to be demoed. So you can see it here, just kind of an outline of where uh, the walls are and the kind of the basic setup of it. It basically is showing here where the new school will be so the note here says existing gymnasium to be demolished all right well I was gonna try to go through this in an orderly fashion but I got to talk about some of these notes and that's gonna take me to other parts of the page so we're gonna get into that but before we do um, I just want to briefly look at the general notes so like number one for instance this is something that applies not only to this demolition sheet, if there's others, uh, then it probably applies to those two. So, you know, you'll see something like all work shown is existing to remain unless noted or indicated as dash lines to be removed. So it's saying when you see something on this drawing, if it doesn't say to demo it, then it's assumed that it's existing to remain. Um, so if, if you if you're if you see a building here on this set of drawings we're going to look at and if it's not giving some direction as far as demolition uh, you can refer to this note and maybe decipher if it's maybe to remain untouched. All right. Now the rest of that note says the extent of the demolition or the extent of demolition work shall include all incidental demolition work necessary to properly provide all new work shown and specified to include mechanical electrical and plumbing and so basically what that's saying is that even if there's something on the drawings that we don't highlight uh, that maybe needs to be demoed in order for the new work to occur uh, then go ahead and do that you know so it's kind of just like a catch-all now we can kind of get into what some of these notes mean and so let's zoom in so we know that right here, this is the area of the the existing school that is going to be demolished. And uh, we have a couple of notes to look at. Now, these notes with the squares, these let these numbers with the squares, these are referring to demolition keynotes. All right. So we're going to we're going to look at those right now. OK, so we can see both. We can see the notes over here on the plans and then we can see the keynotes. All right. So number one and number two are both under existing gymnasium to be demolished. And so it says remove existing structure completely, including roof, walls, slab, doors, windows, frames and foundations and refer to the structural drawings. So we should look at the structural drawings. Uh, to just kind of coordinate some things that may be not uh, may not be shown on this drawing. Uh, that's the reason for th that right there. But um, number two also says remove the roof structure, roofing and flashing completely. So this is pretty much covering that we want to demo this whole building. They included everything here, right? 
Okay, now we have another note in the center and it's an arrow drawn from here to there. And I can tell you that that means that whatever number seven means, it's only going to occur within this space. So number seven says, extent of existing wall to be parged. So you've got a note here and these two are not related. Existing doors to be removed is a separate thing than what number five means. Number five is actually talking about the floor, the flooring in that area. And so what it's saying is existing floor finished to remain, protect during construction. All right, so they actually are wanting to, this area right here, it appears that they want to protect this area. Probably cover it with something, uh, some material that's supposed to protect things like, uh, you know, foot, foot traffic and the size of jobs that I've worked with. I've seen floor protection uh, be, you know, $15,000 just for floor protection. So uh, it can get pretty expensive. All right. So uh, let's look at this section cut right here. And so you remember how to read this if you were paying attention to uh, my video on the cover sheets because we went kind of over all of these symbols that you may see in drawings and kind of uh, you know I, I told you how to read them and, and how to navigate with them so this is going to slice this building right here we're going to take a look at this wall looking this way we're going to see uh, pretty much an elevation sort of look uh, just kind of like we're cutting kind of like an ant hill you know like an ant hill like if you've ever seen a section of an ant hill where you can kind of look into the ant hill if that makes sense that's kind of what you're doing with this you're cutting into it and you're gonna see uh, you know a, a an elevation kind of a view and I'm sure that there would be some details in there now uh, this is actually on this same sheet. We're on A-0.4H. And so sometimes it will refer a cut to the same sheet, just a different detail. So now let's go and look for detail A7. All right, so detail A7, like I said, this is a, a, a cut through the building. So you can see, you can see the, uh, looks like they have a basement here. Um, you've got your first floor. And then you've got your second floor and then you've got your roof. So let's see uh, what all needs to happen at that section cut. We can tell that from the bottom of this footing to the top of the first floor is nine feet. So not not very. I mean, it's, it's just a typical, you know, typical floor height. Right. OK. Just to give us an idea of what kind of scale we're working on in the building the next floor up is another 12 feet now it's probably 12 feet because they'll use two to three feet um, for mechanical equipment and all that will probably be up here above the ceiling and so that's normally why you have that extra feet of space or maybe it, it it'll just be an exposed and, and not have a ceiling uh, I don't know there's a little speculation there for me all right, so here is this note here again, number five. We remember that note is for the floor. So it's just pointing to there and saying uh, existing floor finished to remain, basically. There's the existing wall. Here's the existing slab structure and the existing roof. So there's a couple of different things that they're talking about here. A gravel stop right there. Um, existing metal joist structure to be removed there's a joist right there that's being removed parge exposed exterior side of wall and then it shows so it shows the wall that we're going to infill so infill wall now again this is uh, an assembly this wall isn't just built out of one thing it's not just a cmu wall or a uh, drywall assembly or something like that uh, this infill wall starts out with 8 inch CMU and then it has insulation and then a cover board and then the parging. So that's what's all going into there. I think we got a pretty good idea of what's happening in that detail. Okay, so that was the first floor. Let's briefly look at the basement because there's there was a note in there about a crawl space. So let's see. So 
this is where we were seeing the crawl space. What we were also seeing is another crawl space on the other side of the wall. Now here's a note, note number eight, at all below slab openings, so below slab openings, that would be one like this, that would be one like that, this is below the slab, right? Okay, and it says, go to note number five, it says eight inch CMU infill at opening with parging. All right, so it's just saying apply that note right there. And that's basically what we saw. If you didn't know that, we were looking at this. This is what we're looking at, right? That right there uh, below the slab. All right, then the second floor, you know, similar in a similar fashion. It, it gives you some guidance on what areas you're looking at and what is to be performed. And that's typically what you see here. Now here's note number six, which uh, talks about the existing roof to remain. So I think you guys get the point about how to read demolition, selective demolition drawings. And uh, hopefully it was uh, informative. And uh, make sure to leave a comment and let me know if you learned something or if you have more questions. I'll be happy to answer in the comments. All right, Smith signing out.